Yes. There it is. There it is. We have at least one person doing well tonight, which is, which is great. It's better than none. Hey, I'm so excited you're with us tonight as, man, school's back in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're excited about it. <laughs> man, are y'all glad school's back? Cool. You're excited. You're not. The rest of you don't care. You're just lucky to be here, right? You're just happy. You know, it's nice and really hot outside, but school's in. Man, and I, I'm just excited that Wednesday nights are back on their normal schedule, and I get to see y'all's beautiful faces every Wednesday night. Man, I love it. And um, man, I'm excited about tonight as we're starting a brand new series, our fall series called Rhythms. And what we're going to be talking about in this series is just kind of like, what, what's the heartbeat of a follower of Jesus, or as the screen says, the heartbeat of a disciple or disciples. And, and because I think it's so important as we start into this new school year that we see what it looks like for us as followers of Jesus. What, what, what is so pivotal for our lives? And so tonight, I'm excited about what we're going to be spending our time in. If you have your Bibles, um, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you want to take notes, there's some blank pieces of uh, paper right back there on that table. Um, grab you some of those, take some notes. I think you'll be worth your time. But the new school year, some of you are brand new to middle school. What's up, sixth graders? Well, are y'all excited about being in middle school? Eh. Hi. <laughs> some of you are new to high school. Some of you are like in a brand new school. What's up, Cherokee? <laughs> Come on, go Knights. <laughs> Alum, love it. Hey, but some of you, like, it's just, some of you, it's like, whatever, it's just a new year. But with the new year, I feel like um, it brings up this, like, concept of who's going to be your crew, right? Who's going to be your friends? Like, who are you going to, like, be in class with, right? Like, anyone, when they got their schedule, like, I've got to know who's going to be in this class with me. What's up, Dougie? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, but she, like, right, some of y'all posted your schedule on Instagram, you're like, who's got a class with me? Because you want to know who's going to be around you and get to hang out with you. Some of y'all got really lucky and all your friends are in class, and some of you are like, I don't know anyone, and I don't know what's going to happen. And that's all good, because I believe tonight's going to be a good challenge for you. But, you, you know, who's in class, who's at lunch, who's on that team, who's in, this, in band or drama or w whatever the club may be, your crew is important to you. Like, who you spend time with is important, right? And it should be. Like, who are your closest friends, who you're doing life with is extremely important. And I don't want you to think that it isn't. And see, one thing I love so much about CMC students is, like, there's so many different schools represented in this room, right? I think it's awesome. Because you got, like, Cherokee Bluff and both middle and high school there. That's, that's cool. You got Flyer Branch. You got Davis. You got South Hall. You got Johnson. You got Jefferson, you got Banks County, you got Jackson County, you got homeschool, you got Christian school, you got all kinds of other schools. If I miss you, it's, I still love you. You got East Hall, E Hall? No, don't do that? All right, I won't do that anymore. Um, <laughs> man, there it was. But you got all these different schools. And see, within your school, is like a community. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is community. Like who you're, hello, what's up? AJ, was that you, bro? Do you need to take that? I'll pause for a second. But you got these communities. And then within that school, you got little communities, whether it be like, you know, your sports team or that club or, you know, just like your crew of friends that you're hanging out in the hallway in between classes. Y'all still have enough time in in between classes to hang out? No, it's like running. Man, we have plenty of time back in school, but we only had four classes a semester, which was epic, except for they were really long classes. That was terrible. But anyways, man, we had a crew, and we like, there was this one part in Johnson that, you know, walked down to the mini gym, you know, that hallway. We always hung out there. It was great. Um, oh, it wasn't that. <laughs> wasn't that back then. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Listen, this guy was never that guy. Nope. Um, anyways, back to this. Um, but see, what I want you to see tonight is community. Good Lord, we're going to get past this. 
community, like, is who makes up your friend group. Like, who you're surrounding yourself with is your community. And it's extremely important, students. I want you to see this. Who, who you're surrounding yourself with is, with is important. And it's probably more important than you realize. It's probably more important than you realize because what I want you to see is who your community is, who's surrounding you, is who's shaping you to be who you're going to be in the future. Who you're surrounding yourself with, who your closest friends are, who's speaking into your life, is shaping you to be the person you're going to be in the future. So if you're hanging out in the makeout hallway, that's probably not a good idea to be there. Go somewhere else. Go read your Bible or something. Um, so the question I want you to, I want all of us to ask tonight, I want all of us to ask this question is, who is my community? Who is my community? Who's my crew? Like, who's my friend group? All this. And, and how am I being shaped? What am I being shaped to become? So who is my community, and what is it pushing me towards? What is that community pushing me towards? So as we start this series, what I want us to do is just talk about this heartbeat, talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus, some of the most important things when it comes to following Jesus, the heartbeat. And I think it's important that we start with this. I think it's important that we start with community, who's surrounding you, because it's extremely important that we make sure who's surrounding us is pushing us towards something that's positive and something that's going to build us. So 2 Corinthians 5, um, if you've hung around me long enough, you know this is one of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible. I love just some of the texts that we're going to be looking at tonight. Um, but it's so, like, as we look at this, what I want us to do as, as we are looking at community and thinking with that lens, I think we must start with, what, what makes us fall into these communities? What makes us gravitate towards these communities? What makes us see or become a part of these communities? And the first point I want us to see is this. Your identity determines your community. Your identity determines your community. And we're going to unpack that and really see what that, but like who you are surrounding yourself with is because of what your identity is found in. You could say it this way. Who you are defines where you belong. Who you are defines where you belong. So what I want us to do tonight is I want to look at a passage in Scripture that I believe helps us understand as followers of Jesus what our identity is. And then what are the implications for that as we um, are in community. So starting in verse 17 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says this, favorite, uh, favorite verse in the Bible. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold... The new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So I want us just to kind of unpack that. And the first point from this text that I want us to see is this. We have the same story. We all, who are following Jesus, have given our lives, surrendered to Jesus, all have the same story. Now, your story might be played out just a tad different, but we all have the same story if we've surrendered to Jesus, which is amazing. So now all of a sudden, now we're you, like if you follow Jesus, all of a sudden now you're unified with each other. You can be a sixth grader and follow Jesus and have the same story and be united with a senior or a leader. And I want us to see that we all have the same story, whether you were saved at six or you went through some really tough stuff and then God saved you. All have the same story. Because this is what, you know, verse 17 says. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. So if there's a new creation, there must have been an old creation, right? Right? So what is the old creation, the new creation? Well, the old creation was that you were sinner separated from God, right? We've all been born into sin. No one has ever been born good, right? Some of you would be like, no, you don't know me. I'm pretty good, right? AJ, you're pretty good, but you weren't born good. I'm not meaning to call you out. It's not because your phone rang, bro. True love, man. It's all good. But we all have the same story. You might all have different 
preferences, different aspects of life, different things you've gone through. But what I love about this passage is it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, if we've surrendered to Jesus, what it says is we are a new creation. To get into that, it's literally that who you once were separated from God has been replaced with the identity of Jesus. Now, I don't, I, I'm looking at your faces. I don't feel like that's setting in. Listen, it doesn't matter what you've done. Some of you have done some stuff that you are ashamed of and you feel guilt from. Jesus, in surrendering to him, he steps in and gives you his righteousness, which is his perfection. <laughs> it's amazing. I know for me, this is the biggest thing I struggled with when I came to know Christ was I don't feel like God can love me because of what I've done. I don't feel like anyone can love me because if they really know who I actually am, how could you love me? And Jesus is saying, listen, through the Apostle Paul, he's saying, I'm taking the old and I'm giving you the new. The old is completely gone, right? And how encouraging is that for you to say, who I once was is no longer a part of me. I don't have to hold on to it. I don't have to go back to it. I don't have to remember it. I can step into the new. And for us that follow Jesus, that is true of you. That you're a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come in Christ. And so we've been talking about a lot on Sunday mornings in the you know, big church, right? As Doug says, the big worshiping room. Um, right? That's what you propped up for you, Adam. Big worshiping room. Listen, I was looking at here. I had to raise my eyes a little bit. It's really hard when you're this high. Um, but anyways, uh, we've been talking about what unifies us is Jesus. And so I love that we get to be in a room with middle schoolers and high schoolers and adults, and we all have this in common if we surrender to Jesus. We're new in Christ, so we get to step into this and walk with each other. God has taken what was dead, damaged, destroyed, and created something that is new, perfect. That is new and perfect. So whether you were saved early or you were saved just a few weeks ago, well, this is what's common for us. This is what we have in common. This is what brings us together. You don't have to be going to the same school. You don't have to be in the same group of friends that hangs out every weekend. We get to step into this room. We get to step into any church because we're not just about CMC, right? We believe in a big C church. We believe in a church global. We believe that Christ came for all people that would believe on his name. And we've been unified with them. So the Presbyterians next door and the people down the road and further than that and in Alabama and further than that and on around the world in Africa and Asia, if they have surrendered their lives to Jesus, we have something in common. And I think that's amazing. And what if we... As high school and middle school students, we started looking at people like that. Instead of them having the same likes and dislikes as us, we just said, man, you love Jesus, me too. Like, we are connected by that. We're unified that. You are a part of my community. You're a part of my crew. I love that. We get to spend eternity together. It's amazing. And the second thing I want you to see is this. We have the same mission. We have the same mission. See, everyone in this room has different ta talents and abilities and giftings, and you're, you know, some of you are, like, incredibly smart, and some of you are like me, and you're like, school is really tough, and I don't know what I'm doing. I can barely speak English, um, right? And some of you are, like, incredibly talented at sports, and some of you are like, no, I don't, I'm just going to read a book, and that's awesome, and all these different things. We all have different talents, but what I want us to see is this. You all who follow Jesus have the same mission in life, what your life is made for was to make the name of Jesus famous. Look at this. In verse 18 and 19, um, it says, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself. So God has brought back what was once separated and unified it again. He's taken what was completely separated. We were completely separated from God, and he's brought us back. He's reconciled us. He's made us complete who through Christ reconciled us to himself and then gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So if we've, been, if we've received Jesus, what happens is he gives you this ministry. So we all are in ministry, whether you are a kid or an adult or paid or not paid, we've all been called into ministry, those that follow Jesus, which I think is awesome. That you get to go into your school tomorrow on mission for Jesus with the ministry of reconciliation that God has reconciled your friends that don't know Jesus 
And he's called you to be the ones that take the name of Jesus to the world. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the, ministry, or the message of reconciliation. I love that verse. Not counting our trespasses against us. He doesn't count what we've done wrong against us. That Jesus stepped in to our mess and not expecting us to be perfect, not expecting us to earn it, not expecting us to do enough good that he might love us. He stepped in and said, I know you can't, so I'm going to. And then I want you to turn around and tell the world about that. So if you've accepted Jesus, your mission in life, my mission in life, is to let the world know that God has made a way, that God has made a way to reconcile them back to the Father of the world, the Creator, the God that speaks things into existence, right? The God that says, dead things come back to life. The God that can snap his fingers and everything change. That God, we get to say, listen, he's made a way for you to know him. He's made a way for you to be unified. He's made a way that you might spend eternity in his presence. He's made a way that you might have a family bigger than just your biological family. That's what I love about church is that I get to be brothers and sisters. Brother, I have brothers and sisters in the family of God. That we don't have to be blood related. We are family. And it feels like it, right? Y'all love coming to church and you're just like, man, I feel like it's family. Like I hear that all the time. I just feel like it's home. I feel like it's a big family. Well, yeah, because that's what God's called us to, to be unified, to be on the same mission. So he has entrusted to us, he's placed in our hands the message to be taken to the world, to your school, to your lunch table, to your classroom, to your sports team, to your whatever the club is that you're a part of. Whatever it is that you do, God has called you to take the ministry of reconciliation to that place. And you're never going to be around more people than you are now. Praise God, right? But right now, you're, you're placed in school, and you're surrounded by people that need Jesus. Unless you're homeschooled, then hopefully, you're, I hope your parents have Jesus in your home. Um, but if not, then you've been called to go there. And, uh, but you're not really surrounded by a lot of people. Anyways, but you have a mission. And the last thing I want you to see is this, and you have one another. The biggest thing I want you to see is you have one another. And you're not alone in this, right? Like, no one likes to be alone. Anyone like to be alone, like, all the time? Like, sometimes I need my alone time, right? Especially in a household with a little baby and another one on the way. Sometimes I just need some time by myself. I love you, Lauren. But sometimes I just need quiet. Anyone else need quiet? But when life gets tough, when life is hard, when school just feels like it's weighing on you or your friendships are tough or family's hard, life is hard, like you have a community. That's why we, we emphasize so much connect groups because we want you to connect with fellow students and these leaders that they might pour into you and love you through difficult times and encourage you in the good times. You have one another. Look at this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So the book previous, chapter four, or 12, excuse me, not 14. We're not going to get into that. Chapter 14, verse 12, it says, that, or 14. Chapter 12, verse 14. Goodness, remember I was talking about not being able to speak English? For the body does not consist of one member, member, but of many. So the body of Christ does not consist of just one person. It's not just us pastors doing this on our own. It's you. You're part of this. For the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. For if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell? But as it is, God has arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. And if we are all a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. We all have to each other. And no one is better in the body than the other. Everybody, every member of the body is needed. And so I want us to lean into that. I want us to lean into that as a group of students. What would it look like if this student ministry got real serious about being one, about being connected, about coming together and 
pouring into each other and loving each other, regardless of what school you go to or your age or what you look like or where you come from or what you've done. If we just came and we were together, you're not alone. So I want, I want, to, um, I want to show this photo of this tree. Let's pull this up real quick. Man, those are pretty trees, right? Who's ready for fall and like pretty colors? But these trees are called aspen trees. And they're like um, in Utah and other places like that in Colorado. We don't have these pretty trees here, which I wish we did. But what's cool about this tree, and you're like, why are you showing me a tree? We're talking about Jesus. What's really cool about this tree is how it grows. So like you see all those trees and you're like, oh, all individual trees. But that's not the case for this tree. All those trees are one organism, which means they came from one seed, which means they're not individuals, but they're a unit. They're, as they call them, clusters or colonies. And so when one tree sprouts, the root system literally sprouts up other trees, and they all share the same nutrients, they share the same nutrition, and all that stuff. They share everything, and they're one. So when you see these trees, you're not looking at individuals, but you're looking at one single organism. And I want, I want to read this from, I, I found a pastor uh, that spoke about it, and he said this. Now, there's something unique about the aspen tree. A singular aspen tree is not the organism itself, but actually aspen groves or clusters are single, singular organisms, which means that there's a deep embedded root system that shoots up all these aspens. So when you're looking at a forest of aspen trees, you're actually looking at the singular organism that supports and comes alongside one another, shares nutrients with one another for the good of the growth. The taller trees are drinking in sun, sending it down to those smaller trees that aren't getting sun because of how tall the other trees are. And the nutrients are being pulled from the soil or being shot up to the highest trees. You get the picture of a grove, a cluster. They're actually called clones of aspen trees. Aspen trees are always growing, even in the winter. And at times, the root system will defer nutrients to healthier trees to support the sicker. These trees aren't little trees. They grow up to 131 feet. They're massive trees, and they all come together to support one another because they are one. And I don't know if you're getting the imagery, but that's us. We are one in Christ. We are brothers and sisters after the same mission with the same story, coming together to know one God. What if it looked like if you high schoolers poured into these middle schoolers? And you high schoolers and middle schoolers allowed us leaders to pour into you, to share with you, to come alongside you in the hard time, to rejoice with you when you're rejoicing, to weep with you when you're weeping, to be one. This is what community is meant to be. And so as the band comes up, listen, what church is, like Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings are awesome times to come together, right? We're going to have fun, we're going to sing, we're going to get to be with one another, we're going to eat popsicles to the glory of God, it's going to be awesome. But what if it was more than just an activity or something you did? But it was a time that we even as, it's not just student ministry, where we're just going to gather and it's, nothing's going to come of it, but we're going to create lifelong relationships that are sharing with each other that are leaning into each other, that are helping each other, that are supporting one another. See, this is how you were designed to live. But this is only going to happen if you know Jesus and lean into Jesus. See, because we might have the same story if you know Christ, but you've got to know Christ to have that story. You might be on mission, but you've got to know Jesus to be on that mission. The only way, way you're really going to have one another is if you know Jesus. So my question tonight is, do you know Jesus? And if you do know Jesus, but this kind of community does not, does not resonate with you, is like, that's not me. Do you need to be reminded of what you've been called into? To be reminded of what Christ has come that you might have. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says this, For our sake he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I want that to resonate because sometimes I feel like as Christians, what, what, what happens to us as followers of Jesus is we just forget the gospel. 
Like we just, we can read over that passage and allow it nothing to happen to us. But what I want to see is Jesus himself, God himself became our sin. He stepped into our place. He took on our sin, not to just do it, but that we might become his perfection in the eyes of God. That all the mistakes, all the the wrong things you've done, all the bad things in life, God took that upon himself and gave you his righteousness so that when God the Father sees you, he doesn't see a mess up. He doesn't see dirty. He doesn't see wicked. He doesn't see sin. He sees Jesus. And when that becomes a reality that you see everyone in this room that follows Jesus is seen by God as righteous. Son, daughter, you don't look at each other differently. You don't, th- you don't think differently. You're not, well, you don't know that. You don't know this. You don't know what they're doing. You, you don't know where they come from. You know, no, no, no. You, you see that God sees them. And so what if we as a group of people started seeing each other the way that God sees us? And then we come alongside each other. We come alongside. We live in real community, biblical community that we share because you all have things in life to share with each other that are going to help, that are going to encourage, and that are going to pour in. So the question is, one, do you know Jesus? And two, what's your community? And where is it pushing you? Is it pushing you deeper into the world? Or is it pushing you closer to Jesus? Jesus has made a way. Let's lean into that. So I'm going to pray, and we're going to sing another song. But wherever you are in life, whatever you need to do, whether you need to grab a friend, whether you need to come pray, whether you grab me, grab a leader, do whatever you got to do. You just stand there and sing. You sit there and sing. Whatever you need to do, you do. But know that Jesus loves you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. And he's called you to live together that his name might be made famous.